Welcome to our little van. In this video, we're going to show you why we chose this van. What? Hello, welcome to our little van. In this video, we're going to show you around, talk to you about why we chose this particular van and show you some of the things that it's got that's going to help us with our conversion. The first thing to think about when you're converting a van into a camper van is what base van to go for. Most people seem to go for the Mercedes Sprinter, VW Crafter, or one of the Citroen Relay, Peugeot Boxer, and Fiat Ducato vans. That's the Promaster in the US. And um, things to consider when looking at vans are the trim levels, the engine choices, um, also things like the sizes available. Each one, each um, manufacturer is slightly different in terms of dimensions. So you need to think about how you're going to use the van, what kind of size um, and space you want inside, but also practical reasons where you might be restricted on size, for example, the space on your driveway at home. For us, the size of, of the van was the most important thing to consider. We've got a fairly reasonable drive at home, but we certainly can fit a long wheelbase van on it comfortably. So we wanted to go for something a little bit shorter. Um, now the Ducato Boxer Relay vans have a medium wheelbase size that is slightly smaller than the Sprinter and Crafter van. So really, that was our main deciding factor to go for the Ducato Boxer Relay chassis van rather than anything else because of that medium wheelbase gives us the right amount of space inside but small enough or short enough to fit on our driveway. Um, in terms of why, how we chose the which one of those three we wanted to go for, um, really it was down to price and availability to an extent but also um, I did some research on things like engines and the Citroen and Peugeot share the same engine and Fiat has a slightly different one. It's a 2.3 multi-jet and it's an Abeco engine I think. Um, and I've read some good feedback and, and information about that particular engine. So, you know, need to narrow down the field. So we chose the Fiat Ducato. And then the sizes, as I said, um, we needed a medium wheelbase. Now the Ducato comes in four lengths, which is L1 to L4 and three heights, H1 to H3. So we went for the L2 H2 model. So that's the high roof, which means we can stand up inside it. And also the medium wheelbase, so the L2, which means it's, um, just the right length to fit on our driveway. Uh, most of the people you'll see converting these kind of vans go for the L3 H2, which is about 60 centimeters longer. Um, but the other reason we like these vans was that they're really wide. So I think you can get about 1.9 meters across in the van compared to something like the Crafter and Sprinter, which tend to be a bit narrower. Certainly at the top, they kind of come, um, come in at the top, whereas the Ducato is very square. Uh, what that means is we can have a bed widthways in the back of the van, um, which means that actually because the van's a little bit shorter, the bed isn't going to take up as much space. Um, so it kind of evens out there. So yet yeah, we chose a Fiat Ducato L2 H2 and that's where we are today. Another consideration is whether to buy used or new. A lot of people will look at used vans, you know, particularly if it's a first conversion, um, maybe something that's maybe seven, eight years old with 100,000 miles on the clock for um, maybe five, seven grand or something like that. Um, you could also look at maybe two, three, four years old, um, which where the prices are actually fairly reasonable. Um, and again, depending on which base van you, you want to go for, um, used values are generally seem to be higher with the VWs and Mercedes compared to the Ducato Boxer and Relay. Um, but it's obviously quite variable. We wanted something kind of low mileage, relatively new, um, and reliable as the base van, even though this is our first conversion. Um, but that was something that was important to us. Um, and so we started looking at maybe two, three year old um, Ducatos. And then we, at a particular dealer, we saw a um, new uh, Ducato on the forecourt that was not much more expensive, maybe 1,500 to 2,000 pounds more expensive than the used ones we were looking at. So we had a chat with the dealer and he said, yeah, they had this massive um, discount on all factory order um, Ducatos at that particular time. And the thing that swayed it for us really was that the discount was also applied to factory options. So all of a sudden, for not much more money than the used ones we were looking at, we could um, we could get a new 
brand new van and we could add some features and spec to it that's going to help with the conversion and not only that those particular features will be um, as heavily discounted as the base van so that's what we did in the end we you know it might be crazy because it's the first conversion we're going to keep it simple so that we're not doing anything too scary with the van but yet we've gone for a brand new um, Fiat Ducato now the disappointment or the frustration with that is we placed the order at the end of June last year and we were kind of told a 12 to 16 week wait but then with Covid and then heading towards Brexit things just delayed and delayed and delayed and we were kind of thinking right we're never going to see the van. Um, luckily straight after Christmas on the 5th of January first day back at work I got a phone call from the dealer to say the van had arrived in the UK and then we got it the following week so it was really all of, suddenly happened very quickly after going quiet for nearly six months. Um, but it's worth the wait and whilst the weather's not been that great to start the conversion we've got a new van we're really pleased with it um, and uh, yeah yeah so we can't wait to get going so here it is um, and I want to talk to you through some of the factory options that we decided to go for um, so you can show you what we chose and um, kind of what, how that's going to help with our conversion. We can split the options on this van into those that came with the trim level. So we went for the Technico, which is the middle trim level on this particular van. Um, those that are free factory options, basically, and then the paid factory options, uh, which we'll talk about those external and internal. Starting with the trim level of this van. So we went for the Technico model, which gives you um, things like cruise control, electric mirrors and windows also rear parking sensors, um, and it also comes with a really nice touchscreen um, radio featuring Apple CarPlay, so we can connect our phones and use our Spotify, Waze, and so on through the van's uh, entertainment system, which is really good. To start with, there were two factory options that you could basically add to the order as a note, um, and those were having a single passenger seat, um, rather than the double bench seat that you normally get with these vans as standard. That was a free option and also to the deletion of the bulkhead and the advantage of doing that in the factory is you get this really nice plastic trim all the way around the edge and sometimes I've seen in, in various videos and stuff that that can be a real nightmare to finish so that's quite nice to have that kind of done for us. Moving outside the van you'll see on the side door we went for a glazed side door um, a factory fit window to us was more, much more comfortable than trying to do it ourselves. Um, we also added the dark tint to the windows as well. Um, we also went for the twin glazed rear doors too, again to help us give as much light into the van as possible. Again, factory fit for um, a decent and reliable and secure and non-leaking finish to the windows. The rear windows are also heated as well. Externally, we also opted for the reversing camera and this then displays on the radio in the front of the van so when we're reversing we can see and get a good view of, uh, of where we're going and when to stop. And the final exterior option, we wanted to make the van look a bit less like a delivery van and more like a camper van so we went for the LED daylight running lights. They just give it a nice kind of modern sporty look to the front and we really like those. Inside the van there were a few options that um, we went for. One thing that was really important to us was the passenger airbag. Again, we're both going to be in this van all the time when we're driving long distances. And I know there's kind of debate as to the seating position versus airbag and whether you really need one. A lot of conversions, if you're buying a used van, won't have a passenger airbag, but we wanted one. Um, and that was the kind of another primary reason for going for a new build. We opted for the Ducato um, seats, which came with this the sort of comfortable headrest rather than the hard plastic headrests with Decato on them, which is quite nice. Um, we opted for the silver vents and the leather steering wheel and gear stick again, just to give it a bit more comfort um, as we're driving around and feel like we're driving a car more than a van. The other option that we went for was the um, converter socket. So what that means is that behind the pillar below the driver's seat, there's an interface into the battery and various other systems on the van. So you don't actually have to wire anything directly into the van battery. We can just plug it straight into the interface there. The biggest option um, other than the windows from a conversion point of view was the Wabasto auxiliary heater. So the factory fit Wabasto heater is in the engine bay 
and the control panel just to the right of the steering wheel allows you to set timers and have uh, hot air coming through into the van without the engine running, just like a normal diesel heater. Downside is that the air obviously comes through the vents at the front of the van, so I'm not sure how this is gonna work long-term in a conversion, but I've tried it and in half an hour, it gets the whole van really toasty. So um, we're, we're reasonably confident that this is gonna do us well um, on our travels. Hope you found this video useful in sharing our decisions for going for a new Fiat Ducato L2 H2 as our base van. The weather is on the up now, feels like we might be heading into spring a little bit, so we can definitely get going on the conversion now. So we really can't wait for that. But um, thanks for watching. Please consider liking and subscribing to our channel if you'd like to see how we get on with our conversion over the coming weeks and months. Or you can visit us on Instagram at our van plan. And we'll see you next time.